Well, my collection of microwave parts seems to be growing now. Got a couple of microwave oven transformers and a few other bits and pieces. Of course, doesn't include this one, which I, you know, seen in the previous video, which I rewired, I mean rewound. Got some nice parts on here as well, some filter capacitors and chokes and things. And a diode as well, a little tiny diode, I don't know what that would be used for. I've got to test these transformers, make sure they're good. Anyway, I know this one works because I was arcing it earlier. I'm going to test this one, see if this, see if that works. First, I'm just going to make sure the primary and the secondary are still good, make sure they're not shorted out. I'll put the meter onto the ohms. I'm going to test the primary. See what we have. Okay, we have about 3.3 ohms. That's about normal. Now I'll test the secondary. See if that's good. And we've got about 203 ohms there, so yeah. That's looking good. Right, let's arc this thing. Right, and we're ready to go. I've got this ballasted through a 1600 watt heater. Would use one with a higher wattage if I had one. Anyway, let's just put the camera there. And I'm going to turn the power on to low. Let's see if we have anything. Oh, yes. Um, of course, it would help if I had the thing plugged in, wouldn't it? Okay, low power test. I can hear a slight hum. Okay, that's on about 600 or so watts. Full power. Yeah, that heat is warming up now and its resistance has increased. Let's try a bit of resonance. This is how you do it. Let's put the... Now I'm going to do it from low power. About the same. Okay, let's ramp it up. Much better. Well, I think that's a good test of that microwave oven transformer. Well, I hope that didn't interfere with the camera too much, and my battery's going down, so I'm going to have to recharge the battery and then get on with the next part of this video. Right, okay, let's try this with both transformers. Now, if this isn't a dual stack, it's just a... Uh, this transformer is just being a ballast for this one. Have the secondary shorted out, and they're connected, the primaries are connected in series. And I'm also using my meter as a switch, and also to measure the current, so let's plug that in. So it's taking about 1.13 amps. Let's move the camera up a little bit. Now you can see that is much more better. Let's see if I can make this big arcs. See how much current that took? It's kind of blinded by the light there, that was so bright. And now we are going mod stack, well sort of. Like before, I've got the two primaries connected in series, and this time the secondaries are connected in series. So I can have an arc from there to there. Now let's power this thing up. It's only taking 270 milliamps. Now let's draw some out. Um, let's draw some arcs. Actually, let's move the camera so we can see this a little better. And actually, I think that was a pretty good um, angle of the camera. You can tell that's a steel wire, sparkly. wire is gradually getting shorter and shorter. Anyway, um, I think it's time to move on with the next part of the video. Let's just unplug that. 
Okay, fully charged camera battery, and one day later... And I suppose you're wondering what all this stuff is that you're looking at. Well, in the near future I'm going to investigate the half-bridge flyback driver again, and maybe even try to make a full-bridge driver. So I've been working on making some gate drive transformers. As you probably remember in that video where I had a complete breakdown and completely embarrassed myself, but... Anyway, I decided that two gate drive transformers would be the suitable thing to use here. So I have built two, and I must say, you're not going to believe this, but these gate drive transformers certainly seem to be working. Yes, it's a miracle, they're actually doing something. Now, I'll just explain the setup we've got here. I've got a transformer, this is one that I have rewound. I've put two secondaries on it, so I can have two separate supplies from the same transformer. So we have a regulated supply for this oscillator chip here, which is a SG3525. And a not so regulated but still good power supply for the MOSFET and the gate drive transformer. Now, now I've got the meter connected up to this capacitor here, which is connected to the gate drive transformer through a little 1N4148 or whatever the hell it is diode. And now let's just plug the thing in. And you can see we're only getting about 12.3 volts out of the transformer. But, let's see what happens if we connect this the other way around. My mum's coming up the stairs making me lose my train of thought. She's probably come in this room to tell me something. She's going to come in to tell you something. Uh huh. Don't forget midnight tonight. Okay, as if I don't have enough to do already. You don't have anything to do. Um, there's the black bin rubbish. The bin is ready to go. Mm-hmm. Right, okay, sorry for that little interruption, but swap the leads around on the output of the transformer. Now let's see what voltage we get. Look at that. And it's still climbing. Got just over 100 volts going in there. We're right at the tipping point of what that capacitor can handle. But, I mean, of what that diode can handle. This is a 400 volt capacitor, so that's plenty safe. But just look at the voltage that I'm getting out of that. I'm getting about 10 volts negative and about 101 volts positive. That's just crazy. That's crazy the amount of voltage I'm getting out of that little transformer. And that's only about 30 turns. Each of the, pri the primary and the secondary are only about 30 turns. So there's some, probably some inductive spiking going on there, giving me such a high voltage. Anyway, now, let's um, put a couple of Zener diodes across it and see if the 18-volt um, Zener diodes will um, reduce the voltage so it's safe to be used with a MOSFET. Okay, a wee bit of bad news. I've connected a couple of back-to-back -back Zener diodes across the tr out tra transformer's output, and I've put that in series with a 22-ohm resistor. And they're 18 volts in a diodes, but they're having a bit of a hard time reducing the voltage. As you can see, we're still at about 20.7 volts. Let's see if anything's getting warm. Mm, I can feel a little bit of warmth there, but nothing to be alarmed about. Of course, I wouldn't dare to touch that transformer's output without any of that stuff on there, but I think I'm going to have to take a few windings off that transformer before I do anything else with it. Well, now that I've taken a few windings off the secondary, it's gone down to 44 volts, so those diodes should have a much better job in doing their job. Anyway, let's um, put the diodes on and see what we get. Well, the voltage is still a little bit high with the Zener diodes, but I think the MOSFET will be able to take that. I'm sure a few volts above 20 won't really hurt it. And the camera's decided to look like it's very, very drunk. Let's try to fix that. No. Mm. Way now. Anyway, I'm going to connect this to a MOSFET and a flyback, and we'll see if it can be powered. Well, everybody, there are still quite a lot of bugs to work out, and I've got this connected up to the MOSFET. Although I'm getting about 18.5 volts on the gate of the MOSFET, I did measure it. The arcs I'm getting out of the flyback are tiny, I mean, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to video that because it's just um, not worth video. Though in one of my previous attempts doing this, which I didn't film, 
You just have to take my word on it. I got much better arcs off the gate drive transformer, so I have absolutely no idea why this isn't working. I mean, if I had an oscilloscope, I would be able to... I'm gonna plea... I'm gonna beg for one of those for Christmas. I'll finally be able to see what's actually coming out of these things. Well, I've done some experimenting with a gate drive transformer. This is a little gate drive transformer that I made. Just a ferrite donut ring that came out of a PC power supply and I've wrapped lots of wire around it. Three lengths of wire that came out of a mouse cable. Seems to work pretty good. I've got this connected between the MOSFET and the chip. And although the chip does get pretty warm in driving this because it really just doesn't have the oomph to drive it. It does seem to work pretty good. I want to do this quick before the chip burns up. I don't think it will, but got to be careful. So this is on the gate drive transformer. That's working pretty good. But anyway, I've got another experiment I'm going to try. I'm going to try a couple of opto isolators. So I'm thinking of something along the lines of this. This is the opto isolator, and this end is going to be connected up to the chip. And of course we've got the output connected to the gate of the MOSFET. So as you can see the voltage comes along, goes into this 10k resistor and into this 18 volts in a diode so we don't get too high voltage at the MOSFET's gate. And when this is turned on, it will pull that voltage down to zero, turning the MOSFET on and off, hopefully. Okay, so I've now connected the MOSFET directly to the chip's output and this gate drive transformer is no longer in the circuit anymore. And there is some good news. At least the chip and the MOSFET seem to be working. Well, I've built a little circuit now. And I'm afraid I'm having to use the camera's microphone here because this battery, which was powering the microphone, well, I'm having to use it for something else. Anyway, this is the little circuit. There's the little opto isolator there, and a Zener diode to limit the voltage that goes into the transistor and um, MOSFETs gate. A couple of current limiting resistors, about 20 kilo ohms. If you're wondering what the noise in, in the background is, yeah I'm watching Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll admit that I'm very sad and I'm a fan of Sonic but never mind. Right let's turn the power on. Okay, we've got 17 volts out of the circuit, which is exactly what I was expecting. Let's just see what voltage is going in. Alright, I need to up a bit. Okay, we've got about almost 40 volts going in. And 17 volts coming out. So the Zen is doing its job. Right, now, where did that battery go? Landed in the bin. Right. Now, when I connect the battery up to these wires, that voltage should go completely out. And does it? Oh yes, certainly does. Drops down by to about 100 millivolts, I think. Yep, drops down to about 113 millivolts. So that seems to be working pretty much well everybody, I'm going to go with the saying that failure is always an option because I've wired this all up and if I try to draw an arc with the opto isolator powering you know, the gate of the MOSFET nothing! It's not even taking in any current so there's obviously a couple of bugs that need to be sorted out maybe it's just simply the fact that the Isolator cannot switch fast enough. I don't actually know what the switching speed of that is, so I have, can't really tell for sure. And of course, gonna need to work on the um, gate drive transformers if I want to use them. Find out what's actually going on with there. I think what it might be is that the wave is sort of got a very sharp pulse like that, and then pretty much nothing. Then you know, going like that instead of you know like a square wave, which it should be. Anyway, I'm just about out of time for this video, so I'm going to leave you with some schematics so you can see so you can see what might be wrong with the circuits and also 
how I wired up the microwave transformers and everything, but anyway, if you know what's going on, feel free to leave a comment, or even if you don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.